Now, the United States and China are in the midst of a very intense conflict. The current relationship between these world superpowers has deteriorated so much in recent years. However, I am hopeful that a brighter future remains, and in today's video, I'm going to be revealing the exact strategy that the United States and China can use to finally solve this conflict. Let's get started. Hello, everybody. I want to give a warm welcome to our returning subscribers and anybody that is new to this channel. In fact, if you are new here, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Cyrus. I'm an American expat that enjoys making weekly vlogs about China and its role in society today. Now, as we start today's episode, I want to begin by having you watch this clip. Now, many Westerners around the world would take a look at this video clip and say, look at these poor Chinese children. They are being forced to pledge allegiance to the Communist Party. They are being brainwashed by the Communist Party, and they do not have any basic freedoms. Unfortunately, there's a very large stereotype because when somebody in China stands up and gives honor to the Chinese flag, they're being brainwashed. However, this is exactly what is happening in Western countries. I'm an American, and I'm a product of the American school system. Every day, I was required to stand up, place my right hand over my heart, and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, in addition to being required to stand daily and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, as an American, I was required to learn about the United States Constitution. We had to memorize parts of that Constitution and never forget that freedom and democracy is the most important thing to being an American. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity, to ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. Now, both of these statements, the Pledge of Allegiance and the Preamble to the Constitution, I probably have not said out loud for over 20 years. But the reality is, is that they are hardwired into my brain because I am an American and I am a product of the American school system. Teaching your students, teaching young minds about your country and about patriotism, about all of the great things about that is happening in your country is not being brainwashed. It's actually happening all over the world. That's what every country around the world does. And in fact, Donald Trump just passed a new law to actually further teach patriotism to Americans. Today, I'm also pleased to announce that I will soon sign an executive order establishing a national commission to promote patriotic education. It will be called the 1776 Commission. Ah, the 1776 Commission. Of course, this is the year that the United States was founded, and this is a commission designed to promote patriotism. It's amazing when Donald Trump says something like this, no one's talking about being brainwashed or anything because I don't believe it's brainwashing. It's just simply America teaching Americans to be proud of being American. It will encourage our educators to teach our children about the miracle of American history and make plans to honor the 250th anniversary of our founding. Think of that, 250 years. So Donald Trump wants educators to tell future generations about the miracle of American history, all 250 years of it. Now, this is actually a very big cultural difference because, you know, in China, when you go to China and you speak to Chinese people, one of the things that they often tell you and that they're ex absolutely extremely proud about is that China has over 5,000 years of history. So although the founding of the People's Republic of China dates back to only 1949, the actual civilization of Chinese people goes back for many millennial. As we know, there's many different dynasties throughout Chinese history. So Chinese people are very proud of the fact that their civilization has existed for well over 5,000 years, and they have documents for that. And that's actually what a lot of Chinese people say. They say, you know, America, you're only 250 years old. There's still a lot that you need to learn. However, for China, they never get the opportunity to be presented fairly on Western media. Take a look at this recent tweet from The Economist. Now, this was sent out by David Rennie, who wrote a really interesting article recently talking about China's anti-poverty alleviation strategy. And he simply came up with this solution is that China is not actually interested in alleviating poverty. They're just using this as a way to further brainwash the Chinese people. Now, I actually think this is a very disrespectful and a very low blow to China. Here's China tackling one of society's greatest problems, 
poverty and they are sending out a plan to alleviate it. But yet we can simply not praise China. We can simply not say that they are doing anything good. Again, this is just simply Chinese people brainwashing. Now, why is it that so many Americans really struggle to understand China? I actually had many Chinese people reach out to me and ask this question, so I decided to make a video. Bifenchabash的美国人,他们都没有护照,都没有出国,都没有打开他们的眼睛,学习其他的国家的文化。now this video I posted on my Chinese social media account and it was very well received by people in China because it simply answered their question. Why do so many Westerners not understand us? We actually spend a lot of time trying to understand Western culture. You know, in China right now, from a very small age, everybody is starting to learn English. They realize that learning English is the key to their future for international success. Chinese people are learning about Western values, but actually there's been very little bit of the opposite going on. Most Westerners know very little about China. Now over the years I've tried to educate myself by reading many history books about China to learn as much as I can about the Chinese language, culture, and society. Now one of the most interesting books that I've ever read about China is this book by Tim Clissold, which is Mr. China. And in this book, it actually details what happened in China in the 1990s when many American investment companies were going to China and really starting to open up China to the Western world. But what's really interesting about this is the last page in this book gives an amazing prediction for the future. And I believe that it also tells us how we can directly solve this conflict between the United States and China. The key global power balance in the next hundred years will probably be between the United States and China. The American and the Chinese have a lot more in common than they think. Acutely aware of their current disadvantage, many Chinese have consciously gone out to educate themselves about America. Their conclusions tend to be balanced and favorable, but so far, not so many Americans have shown an interest in China or made such an effort to understand it. As the effects of the steady migration of jobs and manufacturing across the Pacific to China start to hurt in middle America, a slow realization is dawning that Washington is going to have to deal with Beijing increasingly as an equal over the coming decades. I hope there might be a shortcut in the process of misunderstanding, conflict, and reconciliation that I have described here. If these two great peoples can develop a relationship underpinned by their similarities and where differences are respected and enjoyed, that would be a great source of hope for everyone. Now this closing paragraph by the author is actually something that I believe in so much that it is actually the basis and the foundation of my entire YouTube channel. As you can see in all of my videos, I am constantly preaching that when the United States and China work together, the entire world wins. Now I believe for this relationship to be healed, I believe that the ball is really in the United States court. It really is dependent on the United States of changing its approach to China. But how can we do this? Well, I think it's very simple. I think we actually need to go back in time and look what our relationship with China originally looked at. And to do that, let's take a look at Richard Nixon's visit to China and his exact statements on when they opened up China to the free world. Prime Minister, our two peoples tonight hold the future of the world in our hands. And as we think of that future, we are dedicated to the principle that we can build a new world, a world of peace, a world of justice, a world of independence for all nations. And if we succeed in working together where we can find common ground, if we can find the common ground on which we can both stand, where we can build the bridge between us and build a new world, generations in the years ahead will look back and thank us for this meeting that we have held in this past week. And let the great Chinese people and the great American people be worthy of the hopes and ideals of the world for peace and justice and progress for all. 
Now, did you hear the most important part of that statement? Let's watch the beginning part again. Our two peoples tonight hold the future of the world in our hands. Now, here we are 50 years removed from when President Nixon first visited China, and the, the reality remains the same. Our two peoples, China and the United States, hold the future of the world in our hands. What are we going to do about it? Now, I believe what Richard Nixon said 50 years ago remains true today. These two great societies, if they can come together and most importantly, embrace their similarities and realize that there, of course, will be differences. The United States embraces democracy. They have a very capitalistic market in America, and that has worked very well for America. However, China has chosen a different path. They do it in a one-party state, also embracing capitalism. However, China and the United States are very similar in many ways, and we must embrace these similarities. But we look at the current administration of the United States government, and we have gotten so far away from what Richard Nixon said here. Richard Nixon was approaching China with respect. He was realizing that there, of course, will be differences, but he realized that those differences are what makes us unique and that we need to work on the similarities. Take a look at Michael Pompeo and see how far we have been removed from Richard Nixon's original vision. I hope that the Chinese Communist Party will begin to recognize that if they want to rise, if they want to continue um, to build out their nation, that they need to do so on a Western rule set. You see, Michael Pompeo has completely changed directions of the approach to China. Instead of realizing that there are going to be differences, Michael Pompeo is saying, I hope that China realizes the only way it can continue its progress is to be exactly like America. And China and its people are simply looking at America and saying, we don't want to be like you. We want to be like us. Let's learn to work together and let us just be China because we want to be ourselves. And we have proven to the world over the last 30 years that we do not need to do it the United States way. We can do it our way and be successful. There is always going to be a difference between the United States and China. And if we continue down the current road of trying to change China with foreign interference, with foreign policy, that is never going to work. Now, what is a typical mindset of a Chinese when it comes towards this relationship? Well, I believe this recent comment on my YouTube channel describes exactly that. As a Chinese, we hope for peace. If China and the United States can coexist peacefully, the world will be very beautiful and it is prosperous. We don't want to be the world leader. Now, I've mentioned this in one of my earlier videos. China is not going out with the intent to take down America. China is simply just working on being China. And the reality is with four times the population and a growing economy, it's only inevitable that China will overtake America. They did not set out the goal to become the number one superpower in the world. China set out the goal of improving the lives of Chinese people. When they are eradicating poverty, creating new jobs, and create, you know, increasing a better infrastructure in its society and in its cities, it's only inevitable that China's economic rise will take it to the number one position. And as we conclude this video, I want to go back to that last frame in the Richard Nixon video to let you know of an important sign that really shares the future of China's goal and aspirations. Now, towards the end of that Richard Nixon video, we can see this sign, which which is one of the most important signs in all of China. However, it's a little bit unclear because the video footage is over 50 years old. So let me give you another version. This is me in January 2008 in the middle of Tiananmen Square, standing outside the Forbidden City. And the Forbidden City is China's most important cultural building in all of China. And directly to the right of the Chairman Mao portrait, we can see the exact same sign. Let's zoom in for a closer look. Now this phrase in Chinese is, which directly translated means long live the unity of the people of the world. China is willing to work with countries around the world. China is willing to sit down at the table and have a peaceful discussion on how the United States and China are going to work. But myself, as an American, are we able to swallow our pride? Are we able to drop our ego and finally look at China as an equal? Are we going to realize that China has their own way of doing things and not manipulate China and force them to become and work exactly like America does? If Americans can swallow their pride, treat China as an equal, and look forward to building a prosperous relationship, I believe that this is the key on how we can solve this conflict between the United States and China. But that's going to require Americans, including myself, to continue to learn more about China and to realize that it's okay to have differences, that every country in the world is unique, every society is different, and that we must work on our similarities and build together. 
Let's not forget that message from Richard Nixon. The future of the world is in these two nations' hands. Now it's time for us to act. Now everybody, I want to thank you for making it to this point in the video. If you are new to this channel, I would love for you to consider hitting that subscribe button. In addition to that, I have recently launched a new Patreon account. If you're interested in learning more on how you can receive exclusive content from me and help out some of the most neediest orphans in China, click the link down below and subscribe to my Patreon account today. Guys, I can't thank you enough for your continued support as we grow this channel and continue helping more people around the world learn more about China. My name is Cyrus. Thank you for spending time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.